Welcome to Gallery Thomas. We're happy to show you our exhibition and show you our gallery. Um, I'm Silke Thomas. I'm Raymond Thomas. And I'm Jörg Pahl. And this is the exhibition which we just have now in 2021. And we'll take you around. Let's start with the Van Dongen. Well, Van Dongen, as you probably know, was very much involved and connected with the fourth person, mm -hmm. the main painters, especially Matisse. He was really exaggerating in colors and in shapes as well. So this is a lady, he portrayed and uh, he, I think he, he got all the empathy that he had for this special person. We don't know, unfortunately, who it is. Yeah, there's a beautiful way of painting place here. It's just the, the, very masterly in the, in the ornament and in the detail that he put in. So the next one, you can see this portrait by Jeff Lenski, which is completely different to Van Dongen. Uh, it's rough, it's uh, not this delicate in, in the uh, performance. I, even you can see the background in some parts, which he uses as the line. Sometimes he has a black line, but here he takes the underground, the cardboard, as a part of uh, the, his, uh, of part of uh, the color. And also it's exciting how different these two portraits, for instance, the Van Dongen and the uh, Jeff Lensky are in the way of how they're putting the head and the face into the picture. Jeff Lensky likes to have it narrow, to have a huge, huge body and an almost small head, which gives a special tension in the, in the complete uh, comp composition. So, we are with Jeflensky in the Blue Rider situation, the Blue Rider period. And uh, starting here, we have quite an, an interesting example of the early century with Franz Marc. Yeah, it was it's, his dog, it was his Rossi, his beloved Rossi. Yes. Um, and which he painted quite often. And, um, and it's so delicate, if you look at the white, mm. how he shapes the white and the colors. Yeah, putting the yellow in, and on top of it, really vivid, vivid structures. So another Blue Rider work is the work by Gabriel de Munter, which we have here, which is a rather important work. Um, it's from 1912, and it shows um, the, 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 the um, flat where she lived together with Kandinsky, and it shows the visit of Hans Golz, who was the art dealer. Um, they just had the exhibition in April 12 of the Blue Rider at Hans Golz. And um, this shows a situation where Kandinsky is standing in his own living room and Hans Goltz is talking to Kandinsky. Um, in the middle is the wife of Hans Goltz and there's a friend whose identity is not quite um, sure sitting on the windowsill and listening very carefully and attentively to the conversation that is going on. And the, and the exhibition was right around the other corner here in Munich. Yeah. So we're in the midst between the two of them, which is really nice. It's, it's great that these things all happened here in Munich, which was the heart of the Blue Rider at the time. So that's really nice. We, we are not part of the, of the uh, Brücke um, in Munich. The Brücke did not happen in Munich, it happened in Dresden. And um, there's a beautiful painting here by, um, by Heckel um, from 1910. This is a, a bridge in a park just outside of, of Dresden. Um, and it's beautiful, beautiful work because it just it comes, I think it's very unpretentious. It just comes um, very um, unexcited. But if you look at it, um, it really has all of this magic of color and brush stroke, and it has the expressiveness. Um, still, you can really see the shapes. It's readable. I really like the mixture of it, and you have the feeling that the canopy of the trees just keeps on going on and on, and is held by these red stems. So it's a very compositional and um, colorful, strong, idea of freedom of colors. Yeah, and the, and the bridge is a motif that a lot of painters went back to, from Van Gogh right. to Picasso and, and Braque and Estac. So it's really something, and obviously this is a bridge in a painting of the br bridge artist. Emil Nolde was also a, a painter of the, of the Brücke, of the br uh, group, uh, bridge. We have two paintings here. We have a flower painting, which is very nice. It's uh, not from the period of the bridge, it's from the 40s, it's later. And we have one work from the 20s, which is the beautiful landscape with the Petersenhof, um, which is a very strong um, and very convincing 
typical, uh, very painterly Which work. Which is the view from his studio, from his own house, across the water to the other side. It's actually his neighbor, which is paint the house and the farmhouse of the neighbor. But another painting from the end of the bridge phase is this painting by Hermann Max Pechstein. This is a painting which um, needs a moment to be read because you have kind of cubistic ideas about it already. And um, you have this kind of um, African stool. So this obviously also refers, like Picasso, the bridge people also took a lot of influences from the African uh, masks, from the South um, East, Eastern um, figures. And you see this, you see this stool, and there's the, the um, vegetables on it, um, cauliflower and uh, oranges and, and lemons. But also here in the background, you can read the figure. So there's a, a great dancer that's spreading their arms in the background here, and that's the wall spread which they had um, in the studio. And you can really find this again and again, as well as the vase. Speaking about cubism, we have another work which is. Um, a relevant work of the cubism um, from a lady this time. This is Marie Blanchard. Marie Blanchard is an artist that is Spanish born. She obviously worked in Paris for a while. She was very close to Glaze. Um, and this is one of the great paintings that she did in a period where she was um, intensely working on these cubist works. Um, in a, in a, this is a saxophone player. It's a very classical um, cubist motif to have instruments or have people with instruments. So this is um, super. The way that she formulates her cubism with bigger shapes, um, again, with the interlocking of, um, of, of the shapes is very, very wonderful. One of the most important surrealist artists, beginning with Dada in the late 10, early 20s, then founding member of the surrealist group around André Breton and certainly one of the most important German artists, one of the most important surrealist artists, and one of the geniuses of new techniques he's using. And you can see almost everything that he did, uh, an example for how he worked in our little small exhibition here. You have sculpture, you have painting with this famous grattage and frottage technique, when he wraps stuff through the um, surface of the canvas or the paper. We have one major work, which is unfortunately just on view, it's this one, if you may have a look to it. Uh, the three ladies tran transfer, as going over the river. Very different to the marine, that has a very clear and um, defined lines. And this, this uh, here, beautiful Seraphine, shows a lot of the wit of Max Ernst. I mean, he's an artist who I think must have, um, would have been great to meet because I'm, he must have been a great person. I think he was a very humorous guy and um, you can see that both um, is there, the, the seriousness, but also the, the fun and the, and the wit. There is a plaster right here. That's another um, piece which is showing how much he likes to play with the material. This is a plaster that he did. Um, they had did 12 all together, painted each by hand. Um, and you can really see how he uh, put his hands into the material, how he liked to work on that. This is a plaster that actually belonged to um, William Copley at, uh, in, in the provenance. And this is also a sculpture again here with the Janos, um, the double-sided sculpture. So Janos from the front and from the back, um, also a very cheeky little sculpture. Actually talking about Max Ernst, maybe we should have a look at the Jean Arp sculptures again because uh, they were uh, very close together mm -hmm. and they um, were both artists of the Dada and we have a late Arp sculpture back there which I'd like to show you um, which refers to this period again. Okay, let's go. So this is um, the Hans Arp sculpture which has an incredible title. It's called uh, Der Backe verlustig gegangen which means that the cheek has been lost on the way, somewhere, sort of. Um, and um, I think it's, it's great because even though the sculpture is from 1964 and Arp died in 1966, um, it shows again how Arp was really sort of referring back to his beginnings from the, from the Dada period on playing on the titles, on, on having this kind of um, easiness um, about, about, uh, about art and about 
how he is inspired um, through, the, through the shapes and through the forms. So things again here come together for me. This one is so, totally different and I'm so, so thrilled by the fact that he has only three shapes, just geometrical shapes, which he put together in a certain angle, in a certain way, and gives a complete imagination of a human, of human figure, of a body, uh, just by putting up, piling up, these three different geometrical forms. I mean, maybe different, very different to Miro, who's standing here with two sculptures, who's sort of um, going back to materials that he finds that he and, um, puts together. And you can always, if you look precisely, you always find uh, bits like here is a, a, a um, bit of a tree, um, like a twig in here. And you can see the face of the sculpture. Um, this was certainly. Um, some, some kind of material that he found that was lying there, which he, which he just used for his sculptures again, as well as here. You can just see that it's <clears throat> bits and pieces which he had been putting together to find a completely new sense and a completely new idea, very different than Arp, who was on the constructive and very um, uh, f flat in a way. Very, um, it's a completely different surface in these sculptures. So um, this was the classical section, and if you want to see the modern section, we are having a second video um, about the works in the modern department. Um, so we are happy to watch that as well. Thank you for watching.